You're listening to the Good News Podcast with Jamie Holton, brought to you by NBUC. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on the Good News Podcast. Uh, This is an episode that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. This is one of my favorite people on the planet. It really is. I mean, I know I say that all the time, but this really is. This is Chris Skidmore. Chris has grown up in Brampton. He's been a friend of our family's from the time since he was just little. Uh, we have such a close connection. He's grown up in the church. He's become a golf pro. And I'm just, I'm just amazed. I'm in awe at the beautiful life that he has. And I'm so glad that he shares it with us today. But get ready because this is about way more than golf. It's about so much more than golf. Don't get me wrong. Chris offers us some tips on golf. And I think for the golfers in the crowd, you'll really enjoy this. But it's about way more than golf. It's about being present. It's about connecting with people. It's about finding life after tragedy, after challenge, because all that's happened to Chris and more. And he also shares his faith, how faith in his life makes such a difference every single day. So sit back, relax, enjoy your walk wherever you are. I think you're going to really be inspired by this conversation. It's all about good news. Let's dive in. Uh, hi everybody! So glad that you could join us for the Good News Podcast today. Like I, I'm, I, I'm over excited. I don't even know what the word for it is. I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity today, but also someone who is, oh my goodness, a, a good friend, a family member. Um, Chris and I go back a long, long way. We'll probably get into that a little bit um, today, but Chris just would love to dive right into the the fact that you are a golf pro because I just think. Like, how do you become a golf pro? Like, how does that even happen? So love to, the, yeah, just start there. Like, how, how did this all happen? Living the dream, baby, yeah, living the dream. It, it's it's wild. Like, it's it's been a few um, a few crazy uh, spots that's taken me, but it, it all started back in high school, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I had a summer job. Um, and, and back then, you're, you're at a stage in your life where uh, you look left, you look right, you look up to a lot of people and, um, my boss at the time, uh, at the golf course, like, I was like, you know what, like, how did this guy get in his position? And, and I found out like there's, there's schooling for it, uh, all that kind of stuff. And as soon as I found that out, I was like, I'm in. So, uh, going through that path, uh, went to, went to Humber, the professional golf management program. Um, and then, uh, you have to do what they call a, a PAT, like a playing ability test. Uh, got my pro card and it's been the adventures I've been on. Uh, I'm so grateful every single day. It's It's been pretty awesome to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, you've been at some pretty, pretty significant courses too, eh? Like what's, what's some of your track record here as far as the courses yeah, so that you've been I, I guess, working at, including where you are now, which is yeah. so awesome. Yeah. yeah so uh, on, on the resume, I, I kind of got my start. Um, Magna golf club uh, out in Aurora. I was there for seven years. Um, Went, uh, went after that to the National Golf Club of Canada for uh, two and a half years, which is awesome. Uh, still in great contact with those guys. Um, missed them lots. But then uh, a crazy, crazy opportunity came um, up with Discovery Land Company, who's uh, worldwide. They're, they're probably our uh, leader um, in the industry. They've got uh, 25 uh, plus properties worldwide. Um, and so I went down to the Dominican Republic in the middle of pandemic, which can be a little, uh, you know, a little nerve wracking, but absolutely worth every second of it. Um, Playa Grande golf and ocean club. And then, uh, now I'm up in Victoria, BC, helping out at, uh, James Island golf and ocean club. So pretty, pretty excited about that. Amazing. Like just, just amazing. Um, just, just kind of going back to making the decision to become a, a golf professional, um, you know, like, like, let's face it, we all have to make decisions in life and, and try to find our way and find our purpose. And, you know, in, in our kind of language where God might be calling us to be and what to do. And so when, uh, when you think back, like, just love to love to talk a bit about when you, when you made that decision, like even, even your parents, like that's not a necessarily a traditional job that, that, that people would enter into it and, and, and there's no guarantees and all those kinds of things. Absolutely. And so, you know, what, what were some of the challenges along the ways you think about, I'd love to hear a bit more about that and even your, your family's reaction to, to, to this. Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, as you, as you know, mom and dad, they're the most supportive, uh, people I, I could ever think of. So they're, they're totally cool. When, 
100%. and that was kind of the route that I, that I wanted to take. Um, challenges for sure, and they, they even exist now in this industry. Is uh, you know you enjoy your your winters depending on where you are. I mean, I guess in the Dominican, it's <laughs> there's still you're still golfing. It's it's beautiful, but. Yeah, that's um, tough. That's tough, buddy. Yeah. 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 Up, <laughs> uh, up, up this way though. Like you, you definitely get your challenges of, um, you know, it's not a Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, you have the rest of the surrounding area that, uh, they have their weekends off and if they're going on golf and they expect to see their, their golf pro there kind of thing. So, um, you, there's a good chance you, you miss out on a, on a few weekends here and there. And that's challenging if your friends are, doing yeah. some awesome stuff and, or you're seeing on social media that they're uh, just having a blast somewhere, whether it's a, a cottage or uh, a campfire somewhere, like that's definitely a bit of a challenge, but uh, you make up for it. Uh, it's such a great networking opportunity. The the business itself. Um, if you're playing with somebody, you, you realize that like, you're locked in for four hours uh, with this individual on a golf course. And it's, it's awesome. If you get the chance to play with someone um, that, you know, really you have great conversations. Um, you have so much more than golf. Uh, and, and that's, that's the thing I love about the, about the business side of it as well. Like it's, as I said, there is the challenges, but the the positives I, I want to say outweigh the negatives for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that's, that's kind of cool to hear Chris, because I think we always look at somebody else's life and job maybe not always, but a lot of times, especially in a situation like this. Oh, wow. Living the dream. I mean, I joked about that when, when, <laughs> when we used to start living the dream and, and, right. and in some ways you are, um, but there's challenges no matter what job we have. And, and, uh, that's, that's, that's cool to, to hear. I think just be, to be real about, about that as, as well. Um, you know, when, when, uh, when I hear you talk about, um, just the, it's more than golf, you know, I, I, I think that's, probably the case for most things you know what i mean it's never yeah. just about one thing um one of my mentors says uh god's never just doing one thing at a time there's so much going on in, in everything we do you know uh our our youngest son kale is playing a ton of baseball these days but it's never just about baseball it's about making decisions it's about being part mm -hmm. of a team it's about discipline and integrity and all these kinds of things one of the things that i see you have like just lights out off the charts giftedness in is your ability to to be with people and to connect with with people and uh yeah i'd love to to hear you talk a bit about how that has been something that has been such a huge part of of your role as as a golf pro and and i know you know as we've talked and some things you shared with me you continue to grow into that and the higher you go the more the more fame like it got if you look up these courses guys like these are not run-of-the-mill courses like <laughs> these are like you've got some pretty high-end people who you're dealing with um, right. and maybe we'll go there in just a minute, but, but just the people skills, the connection with people. Yeah. Talk about how that's been so important to what you do, because that'll extrapolate to whatever we do. Um, right. everybody needs to be thinking about how do you deal with people? If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're a teacher, if you're a business owner, we're all dealing with people, no matter what we do. I think, uh, the, the main thing that has always struck me is, um, as I said before, I've been very fortunate to cross paths with some um, some very cool people. And, and what I found is, uh, just enjoying or having them enjoy space and time with you, um, in an authentic way and something that they're not normally used to, like at the same time, they're coming to your club. They're, they're wanting to relax. They're wanting to enjoy their, their, their kind of step back from all the limelight, everything they're, they're used to. So it's, being authentic, being, um, very personable. Like that's, that's what I really strive to do. And then at the same time, I manage that with, uh, I love to find out what makes people click. So these are successful people. Um, and I, I love to dive into a bit into their history, um, how they got to where they are, um, whatever they're comfortable with, with chatting about, cause I'm trying to absorb and learn that at the same time. Um, but it's, it's just a, a perfect balance of, um, filling the time that's not hitting shots and just enjoying memories, building memories. Um, and then when you're on the higher end, uh, of golf courses, the, the challenge and the fun is trying to make it the experience pop for somebody that quote unquote has everything in life, right? Like, like somebody that could ha have, or is fortunate enough to have whatever money they, they need to put towards this or that, or, I want this. I'm just going to buy. Like it's it's such an awesome um, task to 
to still give those wow um, moments and, and really see like a look on someone's face when you blow their mind or um, give them a, an experience that they, they weren't necessarily uh, expecting. That's, that's, that's my, that's the day to day. That's the, the challenges and that's the fun of it. Mm, that's uh, you know, what's cool uh, to me, Chris is you, you mentioned about listening eh? and, and, and I think, you know, honestly, like, like, and I'm sure people can tell as they listen to this or watch this, like you're a guy that has charisma, like you, you really do. And, and, but I, I think sometimes people miss um, what's more important than the charisma that you give off and where that actually comes from deep within you is that listening and care and genuine caring about people. What I hear mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if this is a rock star or a hockey star or somebody who, you know, um, who's taken up golf for the first time that isn't famous you care about people and that shows as you listen and as you listen to people and get to know them, which is what right. I'm hearing. That's what connection is, man. Like that and golf, uh, uh, uh it doesn't matter what we're doing. That's, the, that's what everybody yeah. is, is dying for is, and especially now, man, especially, especially now. Okay. I can't, we didn't talk about this one as far as what we're talking points. So I hope it's okay. Um, if it's not, I know you're, you're slick enough to kind of slide through it, but, uh, yep. top three people you've met, <laughs> top three people you've met. And why? And and why? Um, top three people I've met and why. I'll go. Um, Mark Wahlberg was really cool. Uh, his work ethic, whereas from a professional standpoint, as well as uh, the fitness regime. Like, so this guy wakes up at three in the morning um, and starts a workout. It's quote unquote like the 3 a.m. club. I was asked to participate. That's a hard pass. Like I, <laughs> he invited, so he invited you to join him for his yeah, three. I'm, uh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not doing one of those. Like that's, <laughs> I'll, see, I'll, see, I'll see you at the golf course at eight. <laughs> that's so, not good. That's not going to be your wow for me. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, that's out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, that, wow. that prob- he's, he's probably like seeing the, the mentality, the focus, the um, putting on weight, losing weight for roles, uh, just how focused he is. Like I watched a guy, I was fortunate enough to go watch some of the movie shoot um, he was doing down in the Dominican. And I, I, I watched him start crying and stop crying seven times in a row before they got a, like the take. And I'm like, how do you just... <laughs> like, and I'm talking waterfalls, like, like, I don't know how you, it's like he hit, like he hits a button and it's like someone just like hit my dog in the middle of the road or something like that. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it's, it, it was cool to, to see that element. Um, and up to that point, it, it just been the, the personable on the golf course. I had not seen him in his element and that, that was neat to, to see, um, someone successful like that that he puts into it uh hey, can I ask, how did that even happen like did he invite you to join him on the on the set or how did that even yeah it was happen? just a we're, we're playing golf uh day off and then um yeah just cool. headed down to to check that out yeah 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 awesome okay so two more yeah two more um two more two more two more uh i want to say um maybe probably connor uh mcdavid um, he's, uh, uh, probably the best golf or sorry, not definitely not the best golf player in the world. Sorry. If he's not going to watch this, but sorry, um, <laughs> best hockey player in the world. Yeah. Um, and, and again, um, seeing, for instance, like the golf course, everyone knows, like you, you get, there's some days when the, the shots aren't going your way and you get to your halfway house. You're like, I can't wait to have a hot dog or something or anything. And it's like, no, it's like cooked Brussels sprouts. And it's like, just stay in like the full athlete mode all the time, never wow. wavering. And it's like that, that kind of pro- process is, is what gets him obviously to where he is. Um, and then last, I'm trying to think cool, cool people. Um, maybe Will Smith, Will Smith was. Wow. A very the he, great story here about Will Smith, which which I found was really cool. Um, at the golf course I was working at at the time, what, like most of them, um, like a no picture, no no autograph kind of policy. And um, he came up, started hitting balls in the driving range, and uh, one of the members had their their grandsons out, and you could see their grandsons just like like 
look, eyeball him like, holy smokes, like there's Will Smith. Uh, and it got to a point where it's, he is so cool that he realized when he was between shots that these guys were checking him out. So he, he goes over, he goes, Hey, Hey guys, what's your name? Like, uh, if you don't mind me bothering you, I'd, I'd love to take a photo with you. And just like to get on their level kind of thing. And, and it escalated to again, him, um, inviting them downtown, uh, when they were doing a movie in Toronto, full on invited, uh, both boys and, and their grandfather down to watch the, the photo shoot or sorry, the, the movie shoot in, in Toronto. I was like, that's, that's next level above and beyond. So yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's cool to see people of that stature still kind of giving back for sure. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, you're getting to see some of these high end people as far as famous people, um, who have huge platforms, you're getting to see them, um, when there's no cameras around and you really can <laughs> see who they are. Eh? And, and that's, uh, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, w- w- love to, love to hear you talk a bit about your day to day life. Cause I, I think probably for many of us, um, what's a, what's a golf pro, what, what's a, what's, yeah. What's your routine? Like what's your, what's your day to day life? Uh, like what's a, what's a, typical day or like, I mean, is there even a typical day? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, There is no typical day. Um, What, uh, what I say is pretty cool is um, just setting up uh, either playing events um, at the facility, whether it's birthday parties, um, corporate outings, stuff like that. Um, Every event is different. Every day is different. Um, We plan, um, especially with the company that I'm with now, very, very precise, particular. Um, so we're right down to the minute on arrival times when people are on property, who's greeting who, um, if I'm not down at the Marina, for example, I'm going to be up at the the golf shop, like where, and and it's, everyone's got a spot to be. Um, and then it's, uh, are we having lunch before the golf round? Are we having it after? And it's getting in touch with the food and beverage side of the, the, the company and, and, you know, checking in with them. Um, and, and of course I'm, I'm doing my best to be a laid back kind of guy. So, uh, I'm, I'm all for whatever's easiest, uh, on their end. So if they say, Hey, like we've got this dish, we, we, it, it doesn't taste as good if it's, it's at this time and hundred percent, like, well, I'll put that into the schedule, work that around that we'll play nine, eat another nine or, uh, even real estate tours, which is a lot of what uh, Discovery Land does, is uh, real estate tours of um, properties around the course itself. Uh, but day to day, it's just it's budgeting, it's you know yeah. ordering. To be honest, I'm, I'm going to go to work and I'm I'm going to sit there and and mingle for half an hour about which pencil looks better on on the on a few of the proofs that I've got. So we're we're, we're, we're ordering new pencils, so you got to do stuff like that. Um, bag tags, you name it. It's just like the small things you see at a golf course, but you, it's just, you, you, you over, you almost overthink, but you want to make sure that you, yeah. you quote unquote, get the perfect, get the perfect touch, I guess. But yeah. that's the, that's the day to day. If I mix golf in, which I do a lot of the time, um, I'm able to, to enjoy, get a good tan, uh, try my best to keep my Dominican tan. Uh, but it's, uh, that's, that's the exciting part. And then, um, if you're fortunate enough, uh, a lot of the time, uh, you can, you can slide into a, a pretty, pretty sweet five-star <laughs> dinners. <laughs> and then, uh, other than that, it's just relax, unwind, um, do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I don't think people would realize, I know I wouldn't have, but it makes sense that there's, there's detail work in every job. Cause I think oh, yeah. I would, I would just think, Oh, Chris Skidmore is a, a golf pro. Um, all he does each day is go out and golf. It's kind of like people with me, like, okay, you know, I get the joke all the time. So, you know, what do you do? Like when you only work a, an hour a week on a Sunday morning, you know, and <laughs> there's so much more that goes yeah. into any of our jobs. And, and that makes sense that there's budgets and there's decisions on all yeah. kinds of things that you, that you have to have to do, uh, you know, love to love to talk a bit about golf. I, Cause I, I think some people listening to this today could, could just be excited to, to hear a bit, a bit about the game of golf itself. And, uh, you know, when you think about the average golfer uh, as a golf pro, um, what would be some of the things that you'd, you'd say here, here's a few things to keep in mind that can help your game get, get better. That's pretty general for everybody that needs to work on these kinds of the, things. The, the best quote I always love, uh, I believe it was a Ben Hogan one is, um, the most important shot is the next one. 
And, mm. and so it, it always kind of like lets you um, kind of stay in tune with your round, um, depending on if you're competitive or not. But uh, um, otherwise, it's just uh, uh, the biggest piece of advice is just knowing your spots, knowing where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and being comfortable with that. Um, there's been numerous times um, when I was a bit more on the competitive side. Uh, you know, you see a guy pull out a driver on a, on a hole that's pretty tight or something like that. And you're like, wow, like you've gone through your practice rounds and you know, it's a three wood, you know, it's a four iron, just get in the fairway kind of thing. And then you see him pull a driver and then he stripes it, of course. And now you're like, dude, I got, a, I have to pull driver now and, and try to try to match it. And then you, you realize you get a little out of check of what your game plan is. Um, you're always playing the course. You're, you're never playing the other people around you. So just best piece of advice is just enjoy the walk. It's uh or cart, cart drive, whatever you got going, but it's, it's, it's a perfect balance. You, you can do so much um, absorption of the world around you between shots. And it's just, um, and I found it such a great stress reliever, um, which a lot of people are going to look at and be like, how is that a stress reliever if I'm hitting it? sideways i'm shooting 120 or something like that um but it's it's a great spot to just kind of unwind relax yeah. and, and that's what i love so much about golf too is that i'm never really um i'm never really emotionally attached to the point where i will like absolutely have an awful day if i've had an awful yeah. day of golf like no chance but um that's it's been a perfect balance in my life for sure yeah yeah wow i i mean that's that's such good lessons for golf. But as we said, it's not just about golf, about life really, isn't it? Eh? When you yeah, think about yeah. just enjoy the walk, like just, just enjoy being out there, enjoy life. Um, and when you live in that kind of peace, right? Like you just do everything mm -hmm. better anyway. You're not stressed. You're not anxious. Absolutely. You can't golf when you're anxious. Like it's just, you know, and you kind of see that. I mean, I, I'm, I've been there to be honest. like, I, you know, I, I can still get worked up when I'm golfing because I'm too competitive. <laughs> and my dad, I love my dad says, if, uh, if you're not golfing up to your expectations, maybe you should just lower your expectations, That's right? Good. Which, which I think is hey, not about not getting better, doing your best, but it's like just don't lose sleep, don't get stressed. But you're supposed to be having a good time. It's supposed Big to be Larry relaxing. That's a good. That's a good. Right? Line. It's not a good one. That. Yeah. So that, I always remember that. And about that whole thing, your your most important shot is your next shot, right? Because in life, let alone golf, you can often be obsessed by the past. You know, you just can't get out of your head, and then you're not present, and you can't take a good next shot. Or I know I've been golfing and, and in life too, where something's not going right. Let's, let's keep it with golf right now, but you're having a, a bad round or a bad few holes. And maybe it's like the fifth hole. And I'll think, okay, once I hit the back nine, it's going to be a new nine. And then, and then sometimes it hits me like, why wait till the back nine? Like why not yeah. the, ne like, yeah. the next shot, yeah. which I think life can be like that too. Like, like today matters, man, live in the moment and, and make the next one a good one. Even if the last one wasn't, and even if you don't know what it's going to be down the road, you know, thousand percent thousand yeah. percent it's it's stopping that snowball effect like if you if you're just compounding your your issues it's it's kind of hey i gotta see this head on and stop it now like why why wait be present yeah. is a big thing that you said too there um and that's that's huge too is just you know taking it by the reins and and getting it back up, getting yeah. the train back on the tracks for exactly. sure. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, so for you, uh, Chris, I'm curious, uh, love to hear you talk about, uh, your own game a little bit. And, and when you think about what's your, what's the, the, the best part of your game is as you manage your own golf game and maybe the, the pieces that, uh, you're working on uh, opportunities for growth. Um, I would say my short irons, my seven, eight, nine, which are common with a lot of people. Um, my seven uh, is probably, or, or seven or my six is, is the the club that I'll, you know, give me, give me 170, give me 175 all day. Like, I love hitting that shot. Like when you have that club in your hand, you're yeah. confident. You're yeah. you're in your oh, sweet yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel I feel really good. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just generic because that's it, it's just a kind of middle of the bag um, club. And if you're just doing like. Uh, block work or, or practice like that you're um it's it's not something that you'd be using your wedges for or just pounding a bunch of drives like you're probably just grabbing your your, your middle irons and and kind of hitting the shots going through the muscle uh routines the repetitions so it's it's a six or seven definitely for me and it's something that i i am probably working on um is my driver and 
uh, we're in such a, a day and age where everyone's seeing these guys with huge swing speeds now on the, on the tour itself. And of course I'm never going to be anywhere near that. Like that, that train left the station long ago, but um, you, you always want to improve and whatnot, but seeing some of the stuff they're doing um, a lot of people are, are now myself included trying to figure out a way how to build club speed, but not get too erratic off the tee. And that's, it's a crazy combination of, literally swinging as hard as you can, but being confident that you're not putting your, your body in um, the wrong position and, and trusting the fact that this thing is supposed to go straight with you barely even be, being able to keep your eyes on the ball and stuff like that. So it's, that's the challenge for me right now is, is uh, working on my, my game off the tee, but um, <laughs> could be different tomorrow, depending on how things go and how it changes. And I, I know for me as a, you know, absolutely not a professional golfer, very <laughs> amateur golfer, it's kind of good to hear it. You know, don't we all like when we're watching golf on TV, I know, uh, you know, me and our boys, we often like it when they're hitting some bad shots or miss a short putt, because it kind of makes yeah. you feel good that everybody's human and everybody does these things. And, and, you know, as we've been watching golf, uh, you know, COVID has had us inside more. And so we've actually gotten really into watching some of the tournaments and Corey Connors is a great Canadian and, and Brooke Henderson, like, you know, and, and that's why I wanted to Absolutely. bring up women's golf and, and women's sports, Chris, because at the, at the professional level that you're at, um, I think it's, you know, my perspective, it's really important for us to be, um, a proponent of, of both men and women's sports and, and, uh, just trying to help see some shifts happen. I mean, our guys, we ended up watching a lot of college women's college basketball this year when it was March Madness time. It just felt, it, it was just, it was really exciting to watch. And I, I just hadn't watched as much as I wish I had of in the past. And mm -hmm. so when you think about women's golf too, like what are you seeing uh, as far as what's exciting there with women's golf these days and how, uh, yeah, bo both are being more included in, in like mainstream golf world, you know? It's yeah. So before we get on just um, golf specific, it's, it's so cool with, as you mentioned, like um, the growth of women's sport and stuff like that. Uh, we literally had to come off the golf course down in the Dominican um, because Hootie, uh, Darius Rucker from uh, Hootie and the Blowfish, he, uh, him and his son, like devoted uh, South Carolina um, fans for, for the NCAA. Uh, and they were in the, I believe it was the final four. And we were yeah. like just coming off and watching, like they, they could, they were talking about this game all day and, and stuff like that. And, and it was in the back of my mind, I was so happy and like, so almost at ease and like glad to hear that kind of discussion. Whereas like 25 years ago, it wouldn't have had as much attention to it. It wouldn't have had as much energy and passion from the fan base to it. So I'm glad that people are realizing that like, you know, these girls are just as talented, um, even probably more so with the finesse shots in golf, for sure. Like the tempo, like women in golf have night and day a better tempo than guys ever will. Um, just a better center of gravity with their swing, just a better, um, smoother takeaways for sure. Absolutely. And, and seeing that transition and, and seeing that they're getting, uh, again, the well-deserved attention finally is, is definitely helpful and, and, um, beneficial for, young girls, um, that are, that are now realizing that, Hey, this is an option. Um, this is something just having all the same open doors and, and opportunities is, is huge. And, um, on a corporate side or business side of things like us doing spousal clinics or, um, you know, nine and dines and, and learning stuff like that. Like it, it, I'm glad that it's going more towards like full family oriented. And it's not just the, the quote unquote, uh, old gentleman's club or yeah, just the boys going out for, you know, a Saturday morning kind of thing. It's, it's cool that everyone's getting on the same page now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Um, Chris, just going to change gears a, a, a little bit here because I think sometimes people can hear about a life like yours. And like we were saying earlier, kind of living the dream. Like, you know, I, I know I was saying, do you, do you pinch yourself sometimes and <laughs> wonder if this is real? Cause it is, it's, 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 got its challenges day to day, totally get it, but it's, it's pretty cool where God has brought you and, and mm -hmm. just excited for you, man. Like so excited for you. Um, but, but I think sometimes many times we look at somebody's life and we don't know all that's going on in someone's life. And, uh, 
So just so we don't paint the picture that, that you have this, this perfect life, because none of us do. We live in a broken world that can be challenging mm-hmm. sometimes, whatever our job, whatever our role. Um, you, you went through a pretty, pretty tough time a few, a few years back. And, and I think it was a, like a kind of like a before and after experience for you. And uh, what I've observed is, um, though, as you came through that really tough time, um, you're a different person now through, through that. So yeah, just to, if you could talk a bit about that, Chris, as that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I guess it was for about uh, 11 and a half years, um, ending in 2017. Uh, I was in a, a kind of a long term relationship with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and again, same kind of thing, a happy go lucky. Um, always be in the, uh, the life of the party. I love I loved seeing people laugh and smile, and still do, of course. And so, um, it was almost one of those things where, hey, like there couldn't be anything going wrong, kind of thing ever for this guy, and um, totally all good. Uh, things went their uh, separate way, and um, at first, it uh, I didn't really give myself the time I, I probably needed. Um, still, again, being that happy-go-lucky, keeping the smile on, um, not really wearing the uh, wearing the heart on the sleeve, just still day-to-day same Chris and uh, I think that kind of compounded inside of me and took about two or three uh, months before um, things just kind of hit me in the face uh, one night and um, just a mixture of grief uh, stress anxiety kind of not not sure um, your next steps in life you you put so much time uh, devotion towards building a relationship like that and uh, it's just, it's tough to kind of be like, where am I now? Or what's my next things? And yeah, it's just a big, big sense of, uh, loss, uh, confusion. Um, and I was very fortunate that, um, as, as many people know, and it's the, it's the telling, uh, kind of sub story, I, I think to, to you, it's just a suggestion from mom and dad. Hey, go have coffee with Jamie or something like that. Just kind of get 10 minutes out of him, just see what's going on. And, and I was very thankful because that was, uh, you know, between the panic attacks, between not, not knowing how to handle my grief at that time or yeah. not really having a sense of direction. Um, our, our short conversation led to, to alpha, which was a great sense of direction. Uh, and I, I met some, some awesome people um Jim and Sherry, as you know, uh just to name a few and 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 everyone between Dr. Kelly and, and just the whole alpha setup was um so welcoming, so inviting. Um and it was great because it wasn't just a a flip of the switch to be like, okay, everything's great again. Like you were still gradually on the we're, we're having difficult conversations, we're having these interesting um topics, discussions. Uh, and it was something that I found was able to kind of pull my, um, my sense of thoughts, my sense of urgency, uh, and kind of put it all towards that or, t- or towards building something again. I'm um, really quick getting my, getting my feet back on, uh, under me. And, and yeah, it was awesome. Um, being able to come out of that with like a kind of like a fresh, fresh outlook, um, uh, a fresh kind of, um, not mantra, but, um, just, just a, a sense of, Hey, like clean slate, like okay. now you've got all this great, um, knowledge and all, all these great people that you've met. And it was definitely a, a super tough time, but you know, that was a, a great instance where, uh, reconnecting with my faith, uh, came at such a great time, um, yeah. in all honesty. And, and I'm still able to, you know, keep tracks with my my Bible in one year app, um, even with all my travel and stuff like that. That's one thing that is very, very easy to to bring along with me. My sister gave me a great um, men's journal when I left that's got uh, Bible verses uh, in it as well. So I'm very thankful to to, to have that uh, connection stronger back in my life, um, especially after like things got uh, a little a little tough there for sure. Um, but it's that, that was definitely the, my, my faith, uh, shouldered the, the blow for me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Chris, um, thanks for that. Uh, just appreciate the openness and, and honesty yeah. and, and uh, uh, life, life. Uh, we all have different challenges, you know, uh, none of us go unscathed as far as life uh, can be Yeah, hard at times, right? And, and just, yeah, it's different for all of us, but um, mm -hmm. love, love where God has brought you through. And, and you know, I, I think for most of us um, day to day there, you know, like you said, reading the Bible in the air, some of the journaling, like these pieces that help us practice our faith. Um, it's a daily and a regular activity discipline, kind of like practicing yeah. golf that kind of keeps right. you healthy and, and those kinds of things. You know, and and I'm thinking as as you're talking, that that transition from like you grew up, you know, you grew up in a home where for sure, like uh, your parents are two of the most faithful people I've yeah. ever met, and just oh my goodness, like they inspire me. But my my sense is that it it's not just a like like you though you get exposed to that as a as a young person. At, at some point, you, you got to kind of find your own path, and you got to make mm -hmm. it your own. You know, and and. and and my sense is that's part of what happened for you, Chris, through, through again, it, it instigated a little bit by just a really, really, really difficult time that, that led to some anxiety and panic attacks. And it brought you, it brought you back into, in, in a way that, that God certainly, you know, blessed you through this, that, that time and, and getting back into your faith. But just, just to maybe if you could talk a bit about that transition, because I think that's really important to to kind of drill down into a little bit right. um that that idea that at some point um you need to own your faith for yourself um mm -hmm. it doesn't just pass on by dna though you get exposed mm -hmm. and certainly create mm -hmm. the space for that for that so just how that kind of worked for you and any any thoughts on that would be awesome yeah for for sure um i think like many people um you know you're, you're growing up you're you're learning about yourself you're learning about your friends um, and, you know, especially through, uh, the end of middle school and, and through high school, uh, I was learning and, and working out my balances of, of life. And I, I definitely, um, now I can say for sure, I, I made the mistake of not, um, having my, my faith as, um, uh, as relevant, um, in, in my day to day and my balance, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, look towards the sports, the, the friends, the, um, at, at that time, the, my relationship and, and growing old and, um, you know, you do, you concerts, you do all that kind of stuff that you do in high school. And again, it's just so much of the, the positive vibes and the positive, um, memories and stuff like that. But I never really, again, gave that, that, extra little portion or piece of the pie to back to my, my faith. And, um, I think that that played a huge role in, in me realizing that, um, you know, things could have been a, a lot easier or a lot uh, smoother. Um, when there, when there were hiccups, if I, um, knew my verses, uh, to turn to, if I knew my, um, my prayers to, to kind of speak and help heal and stuff like that. But, um, definitely after, you know, going through alpha and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's huge to, especially from, from my story and whatnot, it's, it's huge to, to own it that, um, you know, you're not just going cause your family's going like you're, you are, um, you're buying, you're buying into the, 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 the love, the belief, the, the, how good you feel after you, after you leave church and stuff like that. Like it's, it's a full fledged, like, Hey, this is me. I'm here. It's no one's forced me to be here, but it's, it's, it's a part of my life that I'll benefit from. That's, that's definitely once I started having those moments and, and feelings, um, after, after church and, and after my time of reflection and stuff like that, that's when I realized that, um, you know, my, my faith and my, um, my how, how close I, I hold uh, my religion balance in my life is, is very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 as you're talking I'm, I'm i just had this so um visual reminder of a time when i was uh, in high school and uh very similar i grew up in a home where certainly there was church and faith in god but i got to a point where i had to be my own i was kind of curious and and figuring things out and, and i remember my parents were away for the weekend and uh we'd had actually had a pretty my brother and i had, had a pretty big party at our place 
<laughs> and the Sunday morning, I'm walking to church on my own. And a couple of guys I play hoops with, like, they're like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going to church. And as I answered the question, I was like, what's going on here? But there was <laughs> something going on where I realized God's doing something and yeah. I'm starting to own this for myself. This is important for me and for my life. And, you know, I think as you say, Chris, when you start to see those results, that difference that God makes in your life, um, it, it kind of motivates you to pursue this and be not only open to it, but do whatever you can to create more space for it. And, and right. so for, for you, um, what difference does this, this faith that, that, that you're blessed with this relationship with God, how, how does it impact your, your life and the way that you're living and even doing your job as a golf pro uh, these days? Cause I, I know it's just a part of who you are and it, you can, you can mm -hmm. see it, you can feel it. It's, it's really cool. Um, I think the most uh, prevalent thing for sure is just uh, my um, stress levels, my anxiety levels. Um, I know that uh, you know I can I can leave that up to the big man, and yeah. and God kind of watches over that and watches over me, and um, kind of helps uh, alleviate um, all those all those worries, all those um, day to day un unsureness, uh, the the thoughts that you have. Um, it allows me to operate and, and work and live and in a much more um, comfortable manner um, than especially those tough, um, darker days for sure, where it's like, again, no sense of direction and uh, not sure where where you were going or and whatnot, but um, having having that weight off your shoulders and, and knowing that um, there's so many uh, verses, so many stories in the Bible where um, you know, you can turn to God and, um, just knowing that all your, your worries again, your, your anxieties, like he'll, he'll lighten the burden for you. And, and that's for me in my life been the biggest thing for sure is, uh, is that's, that's the big change being able to go about my day to day, be, um, try and be my best every day and, and knowing that, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not steering the ship. I'm just a passenger. It's all good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, hey, Chris, then thanks so much. I, uh, I, I love you so much and appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, it has been, it's been special to, to share this conversation and, and time together and uh, look forward to maybe having you on again another day. Cause I know there's, there's so much uh, yeah. that you could continue to share on. And, and I was just getting comfy in the chair. Yeah. I don't, yeah I don't. Right on, right on. We'll do it again for sure. But uh let me uh, let me just close with a prayer today. I'd love to give thanks for this conversation and and all yeah. that we've been hearing through this this uh, this podcast today, this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, loving and gracious God, thanks for uh, the many many ways that you are working in this world and in our lives. Uh, you you invite us to um, keep company with you, and we discover what it is to live lightly and freely, and just hear that kind of peace and joy that is so very much a part of chris's life because of his relationship with you thank you for the the many people including his parents and so many others that have been a part of of your working in his life for the blessing that he is as he connects with so many people each and every day to give him all that he needs to do what you require of him and thanks again for this conversation uh today and for you being at the center of it all in jesus name we pray amen hey well thanks again chris so much for uh being on the good news podcast today. Absolutely loved it. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, it was great to catch up and uh, I, I've been following along and love everything about it. So happy to be on. Thank you. Hey, hey thanks. Uh, thanks, Chris. And uh, you know, maybe when you're back in the DR, the Dominican Republic, we could do a good news podcast episode from there. That would, uh, that would be pretty exciting. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, probably, probably some palm trees would be a bit better of a background. Eh? I, that, that'd be awesome. Would love to. Well, 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 thanks again. And thanks everybody for joining us on the Good News Podcast. Uh, have a great day. God bless you and hope to see you again next time. Oh man, I just loved, absolutely loved that conversation with Chris. I mean, here's a guy, let's not forget, he's a golf pro. 
And, and and he's meeting up with these incredible celebrities like Will Smith and Connor McDavid, and yet he's just such a down-to-earth guy, Chris Skidmore is. He really has a gift of connecting with people. I know I learned a lot from Chris talking about the way he listens to people and really tries to get a sense of what makes him tick. He's such a beautiful man, beautiful young man, so gifted. And it was a, a treat to have him on the podcast today. I love him talking about how he became a point where he owned his faith. And the guy's still working on his own golf game, even though he's a golf pro. So many lessons for us, not just golf, as we said, but in life. So hope you enjoy. If you want to follow Chris, you can go to Instagram and his handle is at Chris Skidmore Golf. Believe me, he posts pictures that in our house we say, did you see what Chris posted? So follow him out, check him out. He's just a great guy to stay connected with. Next week, hope you can join us as we have a, an in-depth conversation with Claire Barnett. Claire is a director of economic development with the city of of Brampton. And it's a pretty significant role within our city. But what I am looking forward to talking to to, to Claire about is the way that she has been led to help work on anti-black racism. And a lot of what she's doing with economic development these days is helping us live into a new world there as well. I think you'll enjoy. Hope you can enjoy us. Thanks again for being a part of the Good News Podcast.